Hello, everyone. My name is Xin Chen from University of Nottingham School of Computer Science. Here, I want to introduce to you our software for interactive image segmentation, mainly for medical images that works for both 2D and 3D images. Um, so this is the soft interface of the software that we developed in MATLAB, uh, but we compile this into executable files. So you can just install the files in any of the Windows machines. Um, so here is the simple interface, a few buttons on the left to do the uh, uh, user interaction and image segmentation. I will show you how to use this software by using some examples, 2D and 3D examples. Let's start with a 2D image. Uh, so if you click the load um, 2D image button and uh, select one of the files, um, probably where is it, the um, data? Demo images, maybe one of the 2D image. Um, because the image and um, this image has a large uh, black background, so it to improve the to have a speed up of the segmentation. If you're interested in this region, you can crop the image, but the result, save the result, will be in the same resolution as the original image. So no worries. If you crop the image, it will be saved in the original size of the the, the image. Okay, so this is interactive segmentation. You can use the labels. Currently, it supports uh, up to 10 different labels. Um, so you need to just add a few annotations of the background. We say, okay, this is the background that we don't care about. Um, yeah, just uh, randomly add some uh, lines. And uh, if we interest in this organ here, we just add a, a new label, randomly a few lines added, and if we care about this organ, we can also add a few lines. Um, also the kidney, yeah, and uh, maybe here as well. Um, and also, if we care about vertebra. Uh, we can also add them. You can see I'm trying to add, add different patterns of the lines just to show you. You can really add random lines as long as it's inside organ. Okay, so we don't care about the bones in the bottom here. After this initial annotation, we can we can press the button in in the tool session. It's called segmentation. It will run. A graph-based segmentation is based on a very fast implementation that did by Stanford Group um, using a fully connected um, conditional random field. So you can see within a few seconds and it generate the result. This is initial result. We can always editing it. Um, so you can see there are a bit of confusing in this area. So we can add the further background, um, a few lines at here. And um, there, uh, also within this bit, you can add a few lines to correct this uh, initial segmentation. Um, well, and also if we want to separate these different um, vertebras, um, we can always add some background in these gaps to correct the result, and and then. If you're happy with this um, annotation, if you click the segmentation again, it should generate uh, improved segmentation. You can see within a fraction of a second, it will generate a new result, and also you can improve it further. Um, for example, I'm not quite satisfied with this borderline here, and uh, also I can add some annotations here and also for that this bit. Mm. OK, so. Uh, OK, and also somewhere here. Not happy with those regions, so I can add more annotations. So you can see that 
the segmentation has been improved significantly by adding a few scribbles. Um, and um, you can always improve it. For example, I'm not happy with this one, this borderline here. So I can add a few more lines here. So you can see that it's been improved. Then you can save it. Uh, so then is the, the result sessions display the measurement in, in this case, 2D case, and without knowing the physical size, it's just to display how many pixels for each of the labels or each of the classes. And then if you save it, and it will save in um, into image. So you can name it segmentation test uh, dot PNG, for example, then save it. Um, into my D drive, and you can have a look. Um, my well, a lot of files. This is the segmentation file. So you can see it's in grayscale and the different labels using different color to represent this. As I said, this is not the cropped version. This is based on the original uh, size of the image. Okay, and uh, so that's the result. So you may argue that for 2D, obviously this is quick uh, in 2D, but obviously in 3D, that's the one of the benefit of uh, our software that is also quick in 3D. So now if I use the reset button, so it will clear the memory and reset um, all the settings. And, uh, and now if I load the 3D image, which normally in medical imaging is in DICOM format, or in nifty files if it's been pre-processed. So here I just want to load the one of the original one that is in DICOM. Uh, this is a public data set, is the chaos uh, data set. Um, they have CT and MRI. So here I just load one of the MRI, T2 MRI image. Um, you can see it contains 36 slices. If you only need to click one of them, any one of them uh, in this folder, it will load all the DICOM files uh, in the whole folder. Um, it says loading data and it's been loaded. You can see that it, it has been acquired in multiple 2D slices. So other one of the, or the two of the directions or views has been kind of squeezed. So in this case, we want to see the uh, original physical size, we can use this simple pre-processing tool here to resample the, the volume into two millimeter so cubic um, resolution. So you can see this and also you can visualize uh, by sliding this bar here into uh, in different views. Um, basically this is axial view and this is chrono view and this is sagittal view. Um, so and then that if we want to segment some of the organs here, again, this is um, the very large 3D volume. Um, you can see it's almost 200 slices in each of the views. Uh, you can see that this is uh, three, uh, 139 slices in the Excel view and the other one is almost 200. Um, so we can crop it um, to make a faster computations. Okay, crop it, and because we're interested in, in the liver and the kidney, so we only we can crop in, in three different views and make it uh, the volume smaller. Okay, and so this is the uh, the liver, and uh, this is the two kidneys and spleen. So here we demonstrate how to do this uh, multiple organ segmentation in 3D. Now we can start to add the label. It is it exactly works the same as the 2D case. So you can gen, uh, annotate some of the background regions and we don't care about this. We care about the lever, random uh, lines. So this is the lever. Um, add some of the scrimbles. And uh, this is the left kidney, one of the kidney. Don't know whether it's left or right, but uh, we can use different labels to the two kidneys. 
I also use the red to annotate this plane. So this is one view. Obviously, you can annotate uh, along different views in different views to make a, a quicker uh, computation. So you don't need to run the segmentation several times. And so this is the background um, that we. OK, so this yellow need to remember which label is for which, which organ. So yellow is for the liver and green is for the kidney under the liver. And the blue one is for the other kidney. And the spleen is in red, which is this bit. Yeah, you can see the challenges in medical imaging is the, and then after we finish the annotation, you can click the segmentation. Uh, so you can see the challenges in medical imaging uh, segmentation is the intensity of different organs that are quite similar. So we designed the software specifically for medical imaging that you don't need to change of the uh, any of the parameters. It's just a few buttons to click. Uh, the parameters has already been optimized using uh, several different uh, type of ima medical image modalities like X-ray, ultrasound, CT, MRI. So you don't need to worry about parameter settings. So all you need to do is to add the different um, strokes and where scribbles and uh, around the inside the different organs. So for the 3D segmentation, you can see this is the segmentation result. We only annotated two of the slices out of hundreds. So you can also see the 3D mesh model of the initial segmentation. Of course, you need to add um, more annotations to improve the segmentation. But you can see briefly, I only annotated two slices. It gives you a, a rough segmentation of the 3D volume. OK, um, and one of the benefit of using our software is it also have a, a automatic um, recommendation of what, what is the best slice to annotate. So if you click suggest slice, it will go to the slices in three different views that um, have the largest error segmentation arrow. We use entropy to calculate the arrow to indicate what is the highly uncertain bit that of the segmentation. So for example, the bottom bit here is definitely not belongs to the liver. So we want to improve it. If you click this button, it will give you the, 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 the most uncertain bit slices to annotate. Then you can toggle between the overlay, the segmentation, or disable the overlay so you can start to add more scribbles to improve the segmentation. So if we annotate this slice here, so this is not definitely not liver, and uh, this belongs to the background that we don't care, and that is for other organs. Okay, so we just add a few. What? Oops, I accidentally uh, put some under uh, background lines in there, but it doesn't matter, and we can correct it by adding the correct labels later. Okay, that's liver and the kidney um, and uh, blue one is also the kidney. So you can see that we can override the labels by adding the correct ones to the previous one. Um, so then is the red one is the spleen. OK, and uh, we can see for this one is also not correct. Um, so we can add a bit more. Uh, for example, this is the background that we is not belongs to any of the organs. Uh, yellow one is the liver, and uh, green one is this kidney. I think that's the kidney. Um, so that's the spleen. OK, so we annotated another two slices. Then if we do segmentation, um, so it says performing segmentation. For 3D volume, obviously, it takes a bit longer to process the whole volume. But again, it's relatively quick, quicker compared with other graph-based method. Um, 
also this is not running on GPU, it's just one um, run on a single core CPU. This, uh, my, my laptop is not the best one. It's It's been five years old. It's like i5 Intel um, CPU. So you can see that uh, we annotated only four slices and uh, it's the segmentation has been already improved quite a lot in 3D. Uh, and you, you can keep clicking the suggesting the, the next slice to annotate. So it's very likely to improve the segmentation if you keep annotating this slide. Um, for example, you can see definitely there are some wrong regions here. You can improve it and also somewhere here. Uh, and also here you can improve in the other views. Um, so if we give a one more go, and we'll stop there and, uh, because it normally, although it's quite quick to sequence using our software, but still for this volume, and normally if you want to get a very good segmentation result, it normally take uh, around 20 minutes or 30 minutes to do a decent uh, segmentation of the whole volume. Um, but here I just want to demonstrate how to use it in general. So it's more or less guaranteed if you add more uh, annotations to check the different slices, it will always improve the segmentation result. So again, this is the... And normally for this one, uh, it took about 20 interactions, um, adding this checking the interactively checking the result and adding more annotations um, depends on the complication of the organs definitely this is the background that we don't care maybe hopefully i'm not wrong with it but if you want to check you can always go through the uh, adjacent slices to check the segmentation to check the labels whether this is the correct one to use okay so you can always checking them so definitely this need to be background somewhere there um, and then if you're happy with that and do segmentation, so it would give another run on improving the result. Of course, you can add annotations on this view as well, currently, which is not correct, is not accurate at the moment. So it will be significantly improved if you're editing all three views. Okay, after a few seconds, and so you can see the updated result. Um, in, two, in, in 3D view. You can also toggle between the showing or display the, the mesh or not, okay? So you can see after annotating all these uh, this, this views and every time it's improved the segmentation result. Uh, and also this is the result section display the volume uh, for each of the classes uh, in terms of the millimeter cubic. Uh, and uh, then you can reset and save. So now you can save the result um, in either Nifty file or MATLAB file. So you can see test um, 3D dot NII Nifty files. So it will save two files um, in the in your folder. One is the original volume in Nifty file, and the other one is the segmentation in different labels. So that's that. Um, so I just want to load one of the this pre-segmented volume that we did. Um, so this is the MRI CT uh, race data. Uh, you can see we are supporting up to 10 different um, labels. Um, this one is particularly challenging. Um, where is the label? Demo. Okay, so two Nifty files. One is the original one and the other one is the label. So if you load this, I will show you the result. Uh, so here, just want to demonstrate the, the 
how useful it could be. And uh, we use for this carbon bonds that we want to segment is contains eight different ca carbon bonds plus the radius and honor. Uh, you can see the challenges for this one is the intensity of those bonds are very similar and they are in close contact with each other. So you can see this is the result. I spend about 20 or 30 minutes on this data set um, to get the labels. Okay. So this is the demo of the software and um, it is freely available for research purposes. So you can check uh, the link um, that I posted there and send the email asking for password. Um, I just want to know who is using the software just to keep a record, but the software is freely available. Okay. And uh, here is about the software. Um, and currently we submitted the, the working principles behind the software to a journal paper. Hopefully it will be published soon. Um, and about the core, uh, the, the fundamental uh, software to optimize the, the function uh, algorithm to optimize the, the CRF segmentation is based on this paper here, which is not our paper, but it's quite good paper. You can cite this paper as well if you find our software is very interesting and useful in your application. And also here is the simple instructions here. Um, okay, hopefully it'll be useful in your applications. Contact us if you have any feedbacks. Um, thank you.